and get my fluid white out. I'm going to water this down, this white, just a little bit and see if I can get some white flicks. All right, so I think I'm going to leave her for now and um, let that dry and I'll work on this girl over here. So, she's kind of got the color coming down now um, from her eye area. Same thing over here, I'm going to add a little bit of light to her. Just strengthening up kind of where the tears are running down her face um, with the watercolor pencil and then just softening it. Just going between the brush and the pencil. Okay, so we've kind of got our, our darker muse that's letting things go. We've got our more kind of mermaidy muse over here that's holding on to things that are good. Okay, so the next step that I think I need to do is I've got my list of what I'm letting go of and what I'm holding on to. And I think I'm going to, I am going to use this text, I think. Um, I'll probably collage it on. But I think first, as like a layer of pattern, I'm going to write in by hand um, the list. And then I might go over it to soften it. So I'm holding on to, and you're not going to be really able to read this. It's just kind of a texture. So just by adding in some handwriting, um, you're kind of adding in another level of 
uh, mark making, which is kind of cool. So now I'm going to write the list over here, my other list. Okay guys, um, so I think I'm gonna leave the girls alone and um, this is where I start to plan out where I'm gonna put my writing. And um, I printed this uh, quote out on my computer in sort of a turquoise, like a deep, deep, deep turquoise, um, just to kind of go with everything else. And so I'm gonna get my matte medium and I'm gonna stick that down right there. I think I'm happy with it being there. And if you guys are more of hand letterers, like if you're really good at, you know, doing hand, hand lettering, letterers, whatever, <laughs> um, go for it. I'm just, it's not my strength, I would say. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these guys down. And I will most likely, you know, do something to these to make them go in, you know, kind of, I will most likely go back in and tint uh, the writing with some paint or do something to make it a little more integrated. But I like that font. Um, okay guys, so while I was figuring out what I wanted to do with the text, I got the feeling that I should add um, some stenciling in here. I wanna bring this pink kind of into the fold and so I think I'm going to use um, just a little stenciling action happening, maybe pulling the pink from the edge kind of over. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I've got um, a pink, light, very, very light pink mixed up, and I've got a makeup sponge, and I love using these makeup sponges for stenciling, and I'm just going to Start down here. And I'm okay that this is really light. Um, I don't want it to be overpowering. But uh, just like with the writing, the stencils are such a great way to add in um, another pattern, another layer of mark making. Uh, it can be really pretty. So if you're a stencil person, this is a fun step. And you can even have it fade out a little bit towards the edge. You can do two colors if you wanted to kind of create like an ombre effect, just to bring another layer of that pattern in. I might do the same Where do I want to have this? Maybe I'll have just a little bit coming in over here. So it can be subtle, it doesn't have to be, you know, super obvious, but it just adds in another layer, as I've said a million times. Alrighty. Anytime you have a dark background like this, it's such a great opportunity to add in some contrast with a lighter color. 
I love doing these drips or splotches. All right, I'm gonna dry this and then I will go back to adding in my text. Okay, so I've got my list of I'm holding on to. I'm probably gonna just cut it up into strips like I did with the quote. Again, I printed this out in um, sort of a turquoise just to have it kind of go better with the whole piece. I'm not gonna to fuss too much on getting everything perfectly straight or anything like that. I am just gonna put down a big coat of matte medium here and just start gluing. So now for the other side. Okay, so same over here. I'm gonna put down my, what I'm letting go of stuff. And I think I'm gonna center this side a little bit more. Same thing here, I'm just putting a coat of the matte medium on top. So I feel like this area over here is a little bit too bare. So I kind of want to close it in a little bit. So maybe I'll add this guy there. See, and I think so much, I mean, obviously it's super um, therapeutic to art journal, but I also think it teaches you so much about design and balance and composition because to get a really beautiful looking um, art journal spread, you know, art journal page, you really need to evaluate all those things, the design and, and all that. So. That's another great thing about it. I've got just a white Stabilo pencil. Let's see if I can make some marks with it. Not really. I love adding in random like doodling. I just think it adds interest. Adds in your mark. I'm gonna have to go over this guy, with some stuff. Um, what else do I wanna do? Hmm, I'm really liking the look of it. Just pushing this down as it gets wrinkles. I like how this paper gets a little bit, it's a little bit transparent. This all dry. So I might go in with the, some more of our watercolor. Let me hit this with the dryer first. Ironically, self-loathing is kind of ripping, huh? Is that a message or what? Um, I'm just gonna put a little more matte medium over it. Pushed into it too hard and it got a little mad at me. Take back some of the white 
from the paper and incorporate it a little more. I always think it's good to be kind of picky about the drips that you keep. I don't think they should be too random. They need to add to the design or not. And if they don't, then take them away. I'm just hitting these, hitting the text a little bit with some color, but not much. Just adding in some details with a gel pen. This is kind of what I like to call the doodling stage, where you just kind of are adding in some final touches. Little details that maybe kind of take it to that next level where I don't know, just the extra details, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Okay, same over here. So now I'm really just looking at the whole piece and I'm just trying to see if there's any area. I'm kind of squinting my eyes to see where my eyes travel to, see if it feels balanced. I feel like I need to add a little bit more color over to this area, tint these a little more. Okay. All right, guys. I think I'm done. Um, I really love doing this with you guys. You could just keep going. You could just keep adding marks and, and layering um, more and more things, but uh, I really should probably stop and, you know, get on with things. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this process of making a beautiful list of letting go and 
what you want to let go of and what you want to hold on to. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys do. So have a lot of fun, mix it up, try new things. Don't be afraid to experiment. And I hoped, I hope you learned a few, uh, new techniques that you haven't learned before. All right. I'm going to do one more thing. I need to circle this. It's important to let go of our mistakes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I will see you guys in the classroom and thanks so much for watching.